Now we get to visit with our uh, good friend Matt Makoviak, uh, co-founder of MustreadTexas.com, also GOP political strategist. Matt, good morning. How are you? Hey, Chad. Doing great. Good morning. I uh, appreciate you coming on. Let's start off with uh, something that's been making a lot of uh, national noise, and, and this is the the whole, uh, is is President Obama patriotic enough? Uh, does he love this country? And it, it, it all really got started after Rudy Giuliani spoke. Uh, you know, Giuliani, as far as I know, is not running in 2016 for president, but that started the press on this manhunt to ask every single 2016er what they think about Obama's patriotism and his religion. Uh, what are the dangers here for for the 2016ers? Yeah, and, and and this you know was said at a private event with Governor Scott Walker, of Wisconsin, and New York, and it was something that kind of followed Walker around for a couple days. Mm-hmm. You also had the governors in D.C. and uh, the press sort of sort of swarmed him about that late in the week. And so you know, to to the extent that it's you know hurt anybody, it's hurt Walker a little bit um, because he was sort of seen as punting on it a couple times, not answering it quite quite you know the right way, and so. I think it's created a little bit of sort of perception turbulence for Walker. It's probably short term, um, but it has some national press people asking if he's ready for prime time or can he answer tough questions. Does he have, you know, sort of the right mix of qualities to to handle these kinds of situations? You know, from my standpoint, I think I think what Giuliani said. He had a, a kind of an apologetic up in the Wall Street Journal this morning. I think you know what what he what he meant and what he said were different things, right? I mean, I think that I think that Giuliani I think was trying to express a feeling that I think you know millions of Americans have, which is that the president doesn't seem to to want to defend America, um, at least rhetorically, very often. He likes to to often criticize our country and apologize for our country, and so you know you, you just don't get this sort of warm and fuzzy feeling from the president that he. Believes in American exceptionalism, right? Um, you know, he wants to weaken the military. He doesn't want to use our power abroad. He doesn't want to protect our borders. Um, you know, you add all these things up; it's it, it's fairly concerning. And um, so, I think that's what Mayor Giuliani was trying to communicate. He did it in sort of a quick and soundbite way. Um, I think maybe he was trying to shock people. I'm not sure, um, but. At the end of the day, I think it, it you know did some reputational damage to him, and it also has put all the presidential candidates kind of in this awkward position of having to either criticize Giuliani or or criticize the president, and that's you know personally almost, and that's not necessarily the place they want to be. in. I thought the person that that handled it sort of the, the most deftly was was Marco Rubio, you know, who 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 initially said, um, I don't you know I don't feel like I have to answer for every comment every Republican in the country makes, just like. Uh, you know, you guys never ask Democrats to defend things Joe Biden says. Yeah. Um, and then he said that, you know, that President Obama loves the country, he just has bad ideas. So he, he I think, handled it the most deftly of anyone. And I think, you know, luckily this week we'll probably move past this uh, this short-term controversy. Yeah, the, the, those are just the, the type of controversies or the type of questions that can really, it seems like to me, really get some of these uh, Republicans in trouble going forward because – it, it's like part of them that they, they want to throw that red meat out there and really go after the president, but at the same time that they they've kind of they have to look ahead at you know and, and balance the issues. And it sounds like what Marco Rubio uh, wanted to do with that question was say, "This is not the important question of 2016. This is not what I'm running on. I mean, let, let's talk about what's really affecting this country." Yeah, no question. Um, you know, if you just want to swing for the fences, you know, all the time. Um, you know, you might hit a couple home runs. You're also going to strike out a couple times, and, and and the bat might slip out of your hands and hit somebody in the third row. Um, if you just try to instead hit, you know, singles and doubles, it's not quite as exciting. But but your 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 batting average is going to be a lot higher. And um, I, I agree with you. I think you know nothing fires up our base more than criticizing President Obama. There's going to be a lot of that in the presidential primary mm-hmm. on our side of the aisle. But at some point, it's going to become um, less and less value. Um, of less and less value, uh, you know, diminishing marginal utility. I just everybody agrees that the Obama record is not good. It's, 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 he's had a failed record, and everybody hates Obamacare and hates the, the, the you know, the debt and everything else. And so, it's got to be about 
number one, about, you know, what would you do, and number one. And number two, um, you know, how do you contrast with Hillary? So I, I think as we get out of silly season here and out of sort of this pre-primary phase and get into the actual campaign, which I think will really get started probably early April, then we'll be in a position probably for it to become a little more of a substantive race, and I'm certainly ready for that. Busy with uh, Matt Mikowiak. Matt, a uh, story from the Texas Tribune over the weekend. Uh, the headline was, uh, Perry's embrace of tax subsidies could haunt 2016 bid. Uh, w- what are your thoughts on this? This is something that uh, I believe even some Republicans have chimed in on uh, before about uh, about subsidies. And uh, In fact, uh, I think it was Connie Burton who uh, weighed in on the piece, correct? Yeah, she did. I did read it. And, uh, you know, it was an interesting piece because it went back to his time as agriculture commissioner, um, you know, which is uh, a part of his story that has not really been examined very much, certainly not recently. If I recall, he was ag commissioner for for eight years, Mm -hmm. and he has an ag background. In fact, we're going to hear a little bit about that, I think, uh, in two weeks. Iowa, There's an Iowa ag summit that he's going to be appearing at in Des Moines with eight or nine presidential candidates, and you'll probably hear quite a bit about his ag background. But, um, you know, look, this is an issue that every governor faces um, because all these states are using taxpayer funds, at least partially, to offer incentives to, to companies to, to relocate. And so that issue of, of subsidies, or if you want to call it crony capitalism, is out there for every governor. Um, you know, even Greg Abbott, who has said he's against crony capitalism, <clears throat> is um, only closing down one of our two funds. He's closing down the Emerging Technology Fund, but he's keeping the Enterprise Fund. Yeah. Um, and I think his defense on that is he felt like the Emerging Technology Fund was not uh, not efficient and effective and transparent, but that the Enterprise Fund, um, you know, is something that he has to have to keep Texas competitive. So it's a tightrope you walk. Uh, do I think it's going to be a you know major problem or a major hurdle for Perry? No, I don't think it's it's major. Uh, it's just something he's going to have to get comfortable you know answering uh, from time to time because there are some people that think. You should never, under any circumstances, quote, pick winners and losers or, or do that. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's hard as a governor to go into other states and encourage, your, encourage companies to come to Texas if you're not offering incentives. Right. I mean, the, 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 the natural incentives are things like we have a skilled and educated workforce, we have no state income tax on the, on the personal level, we have tour reform, we have strong commercial air service. You know, we have some advantages, but... If you're comparing that to, you know, millions, uh, tens of millions of dollars in incentives, you know, Elon Musk said he would, would, would never have put the SpaceX facility down in South Texas uh, were it not for the incentives that he got from the state of Texas. So there's a, there, there's a point where sort of ideology meets reality, mm-hmm. and the question is sort of which direction you go when you come to that intersection. Visiting with Matt Mikowiak, of course, I uh, invite you to uh, go to his website, Must Read Texas. Dot com. Matt, uh, what will you be focusing on this week? Uh, and, and I assume uh, the the uh, you know Ted Cruz will be a major subject this week on your website. Yeah, he's got a big week ahead with uh, the DHS funding fight coming to a head this week. Uh, the Loretta Lynch uh, Attorney General nomination hearing, I think, is in is in committee this week, and then he has a I think a fairly high profile uh, space a subcommittee hearing that he's chairing. Uh, on NASA, so he's got those those three things, and then of course CPAC is at towards the end of the week, and of course Perry and Cruz will both speak at that event. In addition, with all the other major presidential candidates, legislative sessions getting really fired up now that we have the emergency items and the committee's appointed. So a lot of coverage in the legislature in the 2016 race. Uh, MustStreetTexas.com. All right, as always, uh, Matt. Thank you for your time. Encourage people to follow you on Twitter as well at Matt McCoviak for all the uh, latest breaking news and uh, commentary as well. Thanks for your time, Matt. Thanks, Chad. Have a great week. You too. It's Matt McCoviak. Follow him on Twitter at Matt McCoviak.